Good morning, it's Mark in the minivan with my friend Pearl. Getting ready for a two mile walk, coffee. All right, L listening to a little ultra spank this morning. Um, remember these guys? This came out in 1998. It has the hole in the back, which uh, probably means I was working at VH1 at the time and got it for free. Um, it's good, though. You know, it's a band I'd never go back and revisit on Spotify or on Apple Music or Amazon Music, the streaming services. I would never go back and revisit Ultra Spank on, on those platforms. But because I have shelves and shelves of CDs and vinyl, you know, looking through it, oh, I remember that band, and I pulled it out, and I put it in the CD player in the car, and refreshing, man. It was, uh, they were, they were, I guess I'd call them a new metal band from Southern California, where else, right? And uh, they had David Brattrell produce their, their album, the self-titled album. He's known for his work with uh, Tool, and Stone Sour and Coheed and Cambria and King Crimson. So he, he produced the record and engineered it. And you can definitely hear Tool-esque um, parts in the, in the album. It's a, it's a refreshing listen. Very, very good record by a very good band who, who never really took off. They're definitely a little more new metal than, than Tool. You know, they, they got the... You know, the 311 scratching at times, the corn type of stuff. But... Uh, more organic than than like a corn, in my opinion. Nothing against corn. I love corn too. But yeah, so it's it's fun to go rediscover stuff that's on your shelf that you haven't listened to in decades and decades. I actually got rid of about a thousand CDs two years ago. I took them to a local uh, record store, CD store, and they wouldn't buy them. And I had great stuff in there. You know, the Pixies and a lot of great, probably Ultra Spank. <laughs> I probably tried to sell it, and they, no one would take it. Um, they they wouldn't even have offer me store credit, which I found uh, really telling that CDs are basically worthless. And I still like CDs, although I you know I, I prefer the sound of vinyl. So I've been buying probably more vinyl than CDs because when I don't drive a car, I live in North Jersey. It's public transportation. It's uh, I mean I shouldn't say I don't drive it. I drive the minivan here to Walk Pearl. It's like ten minute five minutes from my house. I sometimes have to drive to work you know it's uh, 15 minutes here and there but I don't I don't listen I don't have a lot of time to just sit in the car and listen to CDs it's not like I live in you know Los Angeles and spend two hours each way driving to work or something but yeah so I, I don't know just kind of um, stream of consciousness consciousness here this morning um, I, I do have a brand new video that I shot down at M3 with Vixen I'm gonna post that. Uh, momentarily for the patrons on Patreon, and then I'll post it for all all the other people, the public, tomorrow. My brother did a great job at editing it together, a little Paul Stanley cameo in there, <laughs> and uh, you'll see what I mean. Uh, not the actual Paul Stanley, but kind of, uh, and you'll, uh, in the Vixen video, also uh, we go back in time and, and revisit Mark Striegel back in the 80s. So my brother did some real creative stuff in editing the video, and uh, it's a it's a fun little sit-down chat with Vixen, about six minutes long. So if you're on Patreon, you'll have that in about an hour or so. If you're uh, not on Patreon with me, you will have it tomorrow. Um, and then to, to end today's rant, Kiss grossed uh, 59 million on the first leg of the End of the Road tour. And all I can say... <laughs> It's, hell yeah, man. I mean, no pun intended. But um, the thing is, I had so many people say, it's not going to be successful without Ace and Peter. No one's going to care. No one wants to see Kiss. Well, guess what? People cared, you know. Very, very, very strong numbers. Uh, a financial home run for Kiss. So congratulations to the Kiss guys. And I was the guy who was saying all along that they're not going to have Ace or Peter back in the band for the reunion or Vinny or Bruce uh, and that they don't need to. And listen, I love Ace. I love Bruce. Both have always been great and friendly to me. Um, I do think that whole thing with that letter Ace wrote, just which I, I, a lot of people think Rachel, his fiance, wrote was, a, a, was really bad for him and, and a dumb move sour grapes but i think they were just pissed that uh they weren't going to get a, any of the millions you know so 
And I did hear Kiss extended some good offers to Ace for this tour to pop, you know, there was a rumor to maybe open up and, and have some appearances with the band, but he turned it down. He, it was all or nothing for him. He wanted to be back in the band. I'm not sure if that's true. Pretty sure it's true. But, um, yeah. So anyways, uh, just like Guns N' Roses, when people are like, well, if they don't have Izzy or Steven Adler, the tour is not going to be successful. And it was the fourth biggest grossing tour of all time. I need to look up what, what the, one, two, and three uh, biggest grossing tours of all time were. What, like maybe the Eagles reunion tour in the 90s? I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm curious. So anyways, that's it for today. My four-minute video, as usual, six minutes. Okay, support me on Patreon, and you can see the Vixen video today. Uh, and if you don't want to support me there, at least buy a Talking Metal t-shirt. That's my podcast, Talking Metal. Buy a t-shirt on the... Uh, this is the old one. They're out of print, but I have nice new ones. Uh, buy a, a t-shirt or a hoodie on Talking Metal. Go to the support section and uh, you'll see all the info there. All right, 20 for the t-shirt, 64 or 50. I've dropped the price, 50 for the hoodie. 